good to be here with uh, Bill Shorten, uh, the uh, Education Minister, and Fiona McNamara, our great candidate here in the electorate of Brisbane. Uh, we've been talking today, uh, as we have every day, about our plans for building uh, the future of the Australian economy, and within that, to build the jobs of the future, and also within that again, uh, to build the education system of the future as well. We're proud of what we've done in education. We're proud of the fact that we are building a world-class education system for all Australians. And we are not just talking about it, we are doing it. Our investments in the school sector across the country is first class. Our plans for the future with the Better Schools Plan are there in black and white for everyone to see and signed off by a majority of jurisdictions within Australia. A $15 billion investment plan out to the end of this decade, for the first time introducing a proper needs-based funding formula for all Australian school kids. Of course, the alternative to that is uh, Mr Abbott's plan for cutting, cutting and cutting to the bone. And it's not just uh, $70 billion worth of cuts in general, it's $70 billion worth of cuts which will affect jobs, real jobs, real people's jobs, will affect real schools, the one up the corner from you, your local hospital, that's where those cuts fall. In fact, if we looked at the impact of these cuts overall, including on cost of living pressure, these are very significant numbers. Think of that $70 billion figure, that equates to something like uh, $2,300 uh, for, on average, for every household in the country. That's a huge amount of money. If you were to take just $20 billion worth of that $70 billion worth of cuts that Mr. Abbott, Mr. Hockey, and Mr. Rob have been talking about, $20 billion worth of cuts would result in 5,000 hospital beds going, one in 20 teachers losing their job, and everyone who's depending on the family tax benefit system having a 5% cut in their payments. And that's just 20 billion of the 70 billion. This is a huge number. And therefore, the choice in this election is between a government which believes in building Australia's future by investing in the future of our economy, our new industries, our new jobs, our new schools, as well as our new hospitals, our national broadband network and our clean energy future, and an alternative which is about cutting each of those things effectively to shreds and threatening people's jobs on the way through. On education, I'm pleased to announce that the government also is taking our investment in the schools of the future further today. Uh, we will, if re-elected, create a new $20 million NBN Connecting Classrooms Fund to help schools across the country take full advantage of the national broadband network. This is critical for the future. This will enable <coughs> at least a thousand schools across the country to make application for grants of up to $20,000 to help them make these important investments and open up a whole new world of educational opportunities, including connecting to other classes and lessons in Australia and overseas. This is practical stuff, it's good stuff. The reason we are doing the National Broadband Network is not just to help households, not just to help businesses, but to help our schools as well. And that, we believe, is critical for the future. So making sure that each school has an opportunity to apply for such a grant, we provided a funding uh, formula which provides 1,000 schools across the country uh, to obtain grants of up to $20,000 for those purposes. We believe in turbocharging Australia's education future, hence our investments so far in new libraries, 21st century libraries, connecting the NBN to schools on the way through, but now to assist local school communities in connecting with classrooms across the country and across the world. My overall point is this, that my priority for Australia's future is to see an extra 1.6 million in every Australian school on average through our Better Schools Plan. Mr Abbott's priority is to provide $75,000 to billionaires in order to have a baby. My priority is to build the schools of the future through the Better Schools Plan to provide a $15 billion investment uh, into the schools of Australia's future. Mr Abbott's priority is a $22 billion plan to provide $75,000 grants to billionaires to have a baby. My priority for the future is to support those 1.3 million Australian families who depend 
on the school kids bonus which gives them $15,000 for an average family. Through their education, Mr Abbott's priority is to provide $75,000 to billionaires in order to have a baby. Can I say this? The priorities couldn't be clearer. The choice, therefore, couldn't be clearer. Before I conclude, let me turn my remarks to Syria and then ask Bill to uh, make some further remarks on why we're here today. Last night I spoke with the British Prime Minister David Cameron. I also spoke with our Ambassador to the United Nations. And during the course of the day I spoke with other regional leaders, including the President of Indonesia, uh, to test regional responses to what is happening in Syria at present. We are working very closely uh, with our partners, our friends and allies across the world at this time of growing crisis <coughs> in the Middle East and in Syria in particular. Let us not forget what has happened here. What we have witnessed is tantamount to a crime against humanity. When you see the use of chemical weapons against civilians and seeing the deaths of innocent men, women and children in the hundreds and the injuries in the thousands. The Australian government, uh, after consultations uh, with our allies, uh, has uh, formed a view that there is overwhelming evidence that chemical weapons have been used in this attack and furthermore that we have high confidence that the regime in Syria is responsible for these attacks. We of course will continue to test these conclusions in the days ahead. They however are the judgments we have reached as of today. These judgments are formed on the basis of uh, conversations which I had with President Obama yesterday, further exchange of information uh, between our relevant agencies during the course of the last 24 hours. The attention of the world therefore turns to uh, next steps. And having spoken with uh, our ambassador to the United Nations last night, Ambassador Quinlan, who is uh, a member of the UN Security Council on Australia's behalf, and on Sunday assumes the presidency of the council, is that we are now working closely with our allies, partners and friends on driving consensus in the Council in the direction of an appropriate set of responses to the Syrian regime. In the last several days I've spoken with the French President, uh, the British Prime Minister, the President of the United States, I've spoken with the UN Secretary General. Uh, and we'll continue to maintain close contact with them in the days ahead. The diplomatic activity in New York is now uh, in full speed and it is important that the international community form a common resolve on this question. 